Woo-woo-woo! Welcome back to the shop, folks. Glad you stopped back by. I'm proud to see you. I hope you're proud to see me. Hey, hey, listen here. I got a little project I've been putting off for quite a while. And I'm ashamed that it took me this long to do it. Wasn't that bad. 1983 Easy Go Golf Cart. Two stroke. Wouldn't turn through. When you, when, you, when you tried to crank it, it hit compression stroke and stopped. Well, it was a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. It already had a brand new carburetor on it. Had to do a little cleanup. I lost a little footage, but I think I was able to piece something together that you can kind of make some sense out of. After all, this is not a how-to video. This is what Rooster did video. So, that being said, take a moment. You want to do some how-tos? Check out the man over here, Mend It Man. Luke over there, he got it going on. He'll hip you out. He got some good stuff. You gon' want to see it. Meantime, I want to give some thanks. Y'all know what that is? Yes, sir. Hey, got a few nice little uh, gifts this week, and I would like to give thanks. Uh, right here. I got me a nice set of Torx bits, fits my impact driver, then I'm going to start using them quite a bit more. Doc, I appreciate this. I'm going to put them to good use. Yes, sir. -y. That's D-R-H, small engine service. Thank you. Then, had another little package, just like it. Briggs and Stratton air filters, five pack. I appreciate that. And the package was also Pack of four NGK spark plug, BPR6ES. I go through a lot of these. Roger McDonald, thank you. I won't waste any more time. Let's go check out this uh, Easy Go golf cart. <laughs> I enjoyed it, and I'm still enjoying it. Guys, I want to introduce you to a shop project I'm going to do. This was, I believe, a 1983 Easy Go golf cart. She's got a few issues. We're going to get it, I hope, running at the bare bones minimum. It's got a Robbins engine on it. If we can get in there. Focus, you rascal. Focus. EC25-2 PG 244 displacement. Let's see what all we find with this thing. I see, I know it's got a fairly new carburetor on it. It ain't run since that's went on there. The issue is having it doesn't have enough power to turn through, especially on compression stroke. I've got the uh, rear axle up off the ground. I've taken the drive belt off. But, I've got me a battery sitting up here and I know it's good and hot. I run me a set of jumper cables from the negative side of the battery I found me a couple good ground points. I don't trust this uh, ground that's in here. This is just screwed in finger tight. I'm just going to see what it does. See that motor struggle? Well, that's much better. When it was connected to this ground strap, it, it struggled and wouldn't go through there. So, whoo, smell that bad gas. Tell you what I'd like to do, it's been so long since this thing ran, I want to send a little cheater fluid to it. I got just a little bit right here in this bottle. Let's see what that choke looks like. Automatic. All right, well, let's give it a squirt in there. I know you can't see from over there. I 
think we got some down in there. Ah, it ain't gonna run with the spark plug wire off. Let's see if we can hear it hit. Well, I'm happy that it'll spin over on its own now. I'll get me, I'll make me up some new, uh, uh, at least a new gr ground strap, ground cable for it. That carburetor, it was put on here new, but it, uh, it's been sitting a while, so I'm gonna hook up a remote tank to it and run it, because Lord in mercy, I'm not putting anything in that tank. I don't know if you can see it. And here's the, uh, Oh, here's the gas cap, and I guess that used to be a float indicator on there to tell us how much fuel was in the tank. That won't be going back on there. So, I'm going to pull that tank off and give it a good cleaning, but first, I'm going to hang a remote tank, and let's see if she'll run on her own. This is my little remote tank. Come off a little GC Honda, has that bracket. Works out pretty good. Suggest you get you something around your shop to use as a test tank. This one's been around for a minute. Put me a big old piece of copper on the back of it. Make, make me a good little hanger. We'll see what she's got. Go ahead and get me a ground here. Let's get another one down here on this motor. Can't have enough. Matter of fact, yeah, that works. Let's see if it'll turn over for us. All right, let's hit it with some fuel. Let's see what happens. Come on, big, let's go. That's good enough. I want to stop. I got my belt off back here. I don't want to booger it up. Now that we know though the girl will crank and run, I pulled that gas tank out of it. Down in there. I gotta get that cleaned out. That ain't gonna cut it. The old man ain't gonna like that. And this is the fuel pickup tube that reached down in there. Ain't much left to it. I broke it. I guess I better fix it. I get busy cleaning this tank up. Make me some uh, ground cables for this thing. See if I can't figure out some way. Put me a battery box back down in there. That and rusted out and fell out. I'm still fighting to get that tar, that old bad gas, hold still down. At the bottom of that thing, I've got some out. It don't look none no better. And this, this is what's coming out of it. This is old gas. That, wish me luck. I got to get that mess out of there. What do you think? A little acetone. Shake it around. Hey, I'm happy with that acetone trick. I don't know if it was a trick. Y'all see down in there is some chain, some decorative chain for hanging stuff outdoors. But that stuff, look at that stuff done turned loose in the bottom. Let me go rinse it out and see if we can get a better shot. Woo! I know y'all doggone tired of looking at this tank. 
But I am so proud of how well that thing cleaned up inside. I'm gonna try, bear with me. Look, I got a light under it. Look down in there. All that stuff, those stains you see, those are on the outside. Y'all gonna work good. That's some of that chain I throw down in there to shake around. That worked real good after I dug the tar out of the bottom of it. Now, last final step on this tank, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I got as much of the water out of there as I can. There ain't much. I'm gonna show you my last step on this. And I don't know if anybody else does it. If they do, fine. If they don't, do whatever it is you do. This is what Rooster does. This is rubbing alcohol. Get it at the, get it anywhere you want to. This is not high enough proof or percentage as I'd like to have, but it's what I got, and it's, it's by golly what we're going to use today. Get as high a proof as you can. There's still going to be some moisture in there, some water. I have emptied the acetone now, flushed it with water, put a few drops of that to dishwasher soap in there. Fill it up with water, rinse it several times. Keep in mind, dishwasher soup goes a long, doggone way. I've got as much out of here as I can, and I'm gonna put a nice liberal amount of alcohol in here. That ought to be enough. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently move it around and let that alcohol touch all sides of this tank. Mix with everything in here. And here's my theory. And I may be wrong, and I may have been doing this all this time just for the fun of it. But here's my thoughts on it. I learned as a child, alcohol will mix with water. Alcohol evaporates. Alcohol mixes with a small amount of water. When it evaporates, guess what happens? It takes that water with it. So my thought is, if I put a little rubbing alcohol in behind washing out a tank like this, mix it around, pour the excess off, whatever's left in there is gonna evaporate and take water with it, and I got a bone dry tank. Next hurdle I got, I got my gas tank done. I need somewhere to put a battery. It used to live in this hole. Y'all see, it got a little bit of rust down in there. A little bit might be being a bit conservative. But I think I've come up with a way. Hold the battery in there. I'm going to stick this piece of doggone 2x6. I'm going to cut it to fit and make a tray down in there and screw it in from each end. Laugh if you want to, but it'll tow the battery, I guarantee you may not approve, but by golly, that worked out real well. That piece of two by eight. I drilled uh, through the front body here, run a couple wood screws in it, and I did the same. I ain't gonna show it to you, but on the back side of this right here. All it's gotta do is tow the battery now. It'll tow the battery, son. Tank's in. Run new fuel line over there. But before I finish running the fuel line, I thought I'd better check this fuel pump. And all I've done is pour a little fuel to the inlet side of it. Let's give it a little power. Hey, hey, that's all I want to see. Test that thing out. We are on our way. New carburetor on there clean the tank, run new fuel lines, new fuel filter, clean the connections, made up new battery cables, got a hot battery in here. I am ready. I'm gonna try and cheat it and see if I can't get the uh, fuel pump to load up the filter here. Let's see if it'll turn it over.
Well, right? And you know what's name? Woo! There she is, all washed up, looking like new money. Yes, sir. I'm going to have a seat. She smoke a little bit? Yep. Sure does. You going to quit smoking? No. It's going to keep on smoking till the day it don't do nothing. But does it go? Yeah, it scoots you around. It's nearly 40 years old. It going to smoke a little bit. That's guaranteed. But, in the summertime, it keeps the skeeters down. Hey, I appreciate you checking out this old golf cart project. My old people are gonna be proud to get this thing back. Be able to scoot around again. Hey, how about one of these? Them subscribes, they're still free. Hit that thing, ding it the bell. You know where it's at. We will catch you on the next one.